Welcome to 502 Sessions. I'm Brian Kirby. In September of 2016, five longtime friends played together as pumpkin bread for the first time, and since then they have been entertaining audiences with their original acoustic music, which blends traditional folk music and fiddle tunes with modern sensibilities and intricate arrangements. Pumpkin Bread developed its unusual sound in kitchen jams, soup nights, and traditional folk music sessions in the Boston area. Hailed by the Boston Globe as pure progressive folk music, Pumpkin Bread has been a headlining act at the Boston Celtic Music Festival in 2018, and they have performed as part of Brian O'Donovan's Burren Backroom Series. They have played in Boston, New York, Baltimore, Washington, D.C., Charlottesville, Virginia, and Portland, Maine. Pumpkin Bread is Connor Hearn on guitar and vocals, Aidan Scrimger on accordion and vocals, Jackson Clausen on keyboard and vocals, Stephen Manwaring on mandolin, and Maura Sean Scanlon on fiddle and vocals. Pumpkin Bread. <laughs> wanted me to know that you'd heard my news 
song You told me that it was clever And I said that you were wrong I thought that we had something special And maybe I was right But I didn't really care just then Because we got along How'd we get to know each other? What did we each say? I don't know, but somehow you and I just started talking every day. But I remember where it started with that silly line. So just go ahead, sing one of yours, and I'll sing one of mine. songs and I often caught your eye I seemed to know right then and there that you'd be in my life but I didn't really know what that might mean or what it might be like I have to get to know each other Say. I don't know, but somehow you and I just started talking every day. And I remember where it started with that silly line. So just go ahead and sing one of yours, and I'll sing one of mine. clearest day to me It sure is hard knowing you without knowing what you need What we choose to care about What questions did we ask And how in the hell are we to know when good is good and when the past is past get to know each other what did we each say I don't know but somehow you and I just started talking every day and I remember where it started with that silly line so just go ahead sing one of yours and I'll sing one of mine Jackie, there were times back in May when the days would go. 
502 Sessions. I'm here with Pumpkin Bread, or uh, more specifically, Connor Hearn of Pumpkin Bread. Did I pronounce Connor correctly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was kidding. <laughs> yeah. It's Connor with one N. Yeah. So is that exactly. a is that a um, a, um, a a country thing? Is that like the difference between? Yeah, it's an Irish name, and I think it's sort of an Irish spelling. My, me and my siblings all have super Irish names. I'm Connor Patrick Hearn. So. All right. Well, yeah. let's talk about Pumpkin Bread, totally. which, which is um, modern sensibilities with intricate arrangements. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? What is a modern sensibility? That's are a you, good question. I read the bio, so I don't know if I can <laughs> put my authoritative stamp on that either. But, um, you know, we, uh, we, we all come from a lot of different backgrounds of playing traditional, like different types of traditional musics. And, um, Such as? Jackson comes from like a R&B funk background and um, Aiden plays jazz and uh, you know, funk and stuff too. Um, Stephen is a jazz guitar player for a long time. We kind of met playing bluegrass music together. Um, he and I did, um, and then Maura and I play a lot of like Irish music together. So there's there's a lot going on, and um, we kind of meet in this in this space that we're calling folk because it's like a general like word that we can all agree on. Um, and then uh, and then we write a lot of the music together. You know, it's all original music, so um, everything ends up being like going through this function machine, you know, where we have uh, these long rehearsal days and we, and we arrange stuff and, you know, it's not like we're playing folk songs that are super old because we're writing everything. There's, there's a lot going on, so we end up, like, writing kind of intricate things and then that's where the, the idea of, like, modern sensibilities comes from, I suppose. Do you, you, know? you say you write the tunes together, you write every tune as a group? So vocals and... Mostly, yeah. It's sort of a weird co-writing process that... Um, I don't think a lot of a lot of groups are doing, or um, you know, I, I think with like songwriting kind of bands, often people will write a song and then bring it to the group and teach it to the group, and that's right, kind right, of how right. it goes. And with the lyrics, that's usually how it goes. But you know, everybody's got veto power, and we can all sort of um, you know adjust and revise together with when it comes to lyrics. Usually, somebody will bring like a seed of something, you know, sort of like a tune seed or a a lyrical idea and then it develops a lot when we have like these writing sessions. Um, when you say they'll bring a seed, a yeah. lyrical idea, do you mean a, a melody idea without words or a lyrical a right. lil, lilt, to, uh, some words that have a natural flow? Right. It, it could be either. I think a lot of the co-writing happens um, like especially as like you know like melodic material. That's We kind of will all write that tune together or something like that. Like the tune we just played um, is something that Jackson and Mora started like you know playing small phrases at one another and they they had an initial idea that it was it was going to be about one thing it was going to be kind of like fast epic thing and then the phrase that got played first was sort of slower and you know more lyrical so it and went in that direction and then we all kind of added some phrases and revised it a little bit and then um you know people who play more melodies might have more melodic ideas and people who play more chords might have more chordal ideas but it's like it's pretty um you know, democratic as a writing process, you know. So when you say they would they would play a phrase together, it sounds like you're improvising a written... A little bit, song. yeah. Yeah, often like... And then you go, oh, I like that, let's keep it? Right, yeah. One of our challenges is often like, you know, we'll, we'll play something and be like, oh, that was cool, like, we let's go back. How'd, we have to remember what we just did because... You write it, it down? Was read, you know? Do you um, write the song? No, none of our music is written down. It's, we, you know, everything is saved in like voice memos and... So like Apple owns everything, you know. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> so, so by that you mean you would play it in, you'd quickly grab a recording, yeah, we get a quick okay. recording, so you don't you know? lose it. If you can, you right, know. right. And that sounds like a might take. Uh, well, it's interesting because no one has ever brought in a full tune. Um, because I understand I, I, what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, right. I suppose that sometimes that would have happened, um, but it usually gets revised as a group. Um, often you'll you'll bring in like especially with lyrics like four or five verses or something like that and then once we start writing the song together or like changing some of the song concepts like you know two of the verses might go you know because you oh. bring in more stuff than you need and then you know everything has got to be a like two and a half minute song so it can be a radio hit you know yeah. uh, so. <laughs> are, are any of you more comfortable uh with the poetry end of it and what I mean by that's the lyric right, end of it right. and somebody's more melodic or that's a good question I mean does, um, does somebody really take the lead with the writing of the words I know anybody can say can you change that to this totally yeah Aiden and I write a lot of the songs Aiden's got the a words pretty, yeah uh, he's got a pretty like poetic background his dad's a poet and his dad's dad's a poet so um, there's that's definitely an influence I think um, and where like some of the strong opinions come from 
So and all right. So let's talk. So the difference between a tune and a song, of course, is a tune is wordless. Or right. It's just yeah, a that's, music. That's, that's yeah, That's why we use those words. Yeah. And so take me through one of the songs so that you wrote. So you did two songs this, just recently. Mm -hmm. This past set just recently. Right. You just did two songs and two tunes, and the two songs were Jackie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the other one's called How Do We Get to Know Each Other. Okay. So how do we get? Right. Um, who wrote that? I wrote that. Most of the words. Yeah, I wrote okay, all the words. Okay, so where did that come from? Um, I was on a plane and I was sort of thinking about a person who I was like talking to mostly via text, um, and it's kind of like a funny way to get to know somebody when you're like not in the same place and you're um, you know chatting a lot sort of in cyber world, um, and so it's kind of like a funny experiment to like put that into a song, which is wait wait. So this is a person you actually didn't really know yet. You were you. You were, it's like yeah, having a conversation. We'd, we'd met, we'd met before, but like you know, most of our acquaintanceship—that's not a word—was um, uh, you know, via via messaging. Oh, yeah. It's, and then you got that song out of it. Though. That's a good yeah. So song. I just had the idea for the for like the first lyric, like how do we get to know each other? It was like my, the idea that I had on the plane, and then I just kind of ran with it and made up a lot of other stuff. You know. So partly biograph, partly autobiographical, and partly yeah. You know, some of it's always fictitious, and some of it's always not fictitious, and it's kind of like you know messy. And <laughs> yeah, right. And then you want to be careful how much of the true stuff right. gets out there. Right, right, right. And then you and Mora sang uh, harmony on that. Oh, right, right, yeah. So do um, you work out the harmony in this group, or do you kind of have a sound for that, too? That's a good question, yeah. Um, it, 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 it sort of depends. Some people have stronger instincts. I, I usually look to Jackson. He's got like really good um, like vocal harmony instincts because he has a big background as like a, a chorus um, singer. He, he did a lot of like touring as a kid in like Italy and stuff, singing in a boys' choir. Um, so he's like good at vocal harmony and stuff. Um, but everybody's got pretty good instincts, you know? All right, well, let's hear some more music. Totally, that sounds great. Um, pumpkin Bread is here, Connor, 1N, Ern. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. You're welcome.
She used to dance in summertime with lilies in her hair But now she doesn't dance too much at all There's something about those summer days that feel so far away She wonders if it's gone forever She feels each year that passes by fall upon her chest She pushes back with everything she has She pushes back with everything she has She wanders through the city hoping anything will catch She knows every street oh too well She looks out at the buildings, how they stretch up towards the sky But none will ever make it there, it seems She's on the rooftop singing for nobody to hear Singing all the songs that have a home inside her mind But she hasn't thought about the words in you tend to wander and some choose to settle down She's not sure where she's headed anymore Still some days she smells the scent of lilies in the air And thinks about the days that came before She feels each year that passes by fall upon her chest pushes back with everything she has She pushes back with everything she has Spends his days walking back and forth along this narrow street. Passing by old buildings, lazy storefronts, and the sleepy, solemn sea. The years move by quickly, and he's feeling it again. Thinking of where he might have gone. Or who he might have been He's caught in restless wandering His moments keep on tumbling away 
Always disappearing like the glisten of the light upon the wave Ships are drifting back and forth across the choppy sea And it all looks bare and empty like the branches on some winter maple tree
502 Sessions. I'm Brian Kirby back with Pumpkin Bread and Connor Hearn of Pumpkin Bread plus the band is here because I do have multiple questions. So, And it is a democracy, right? It, we like to tell people that. Oh, very good, very good. <laughs> so, um, Connor, I had several questions for you, but this might be more appropriate for the band. So what was the last tune we, ju the last tune we just heard was? Right, so that was, a, that was a, a medley sort of of a song that Aiden wrote that we just called Moments. That was the name of the song. And then the tune after that was a jig, and the jig a is jig. called Settle Down. And who wrote that, you said? So Aiden wrote the song that preceded it, which was called Moments. And you wrote the jig, or the jig just came out of Moments? The jig was one of our organic processes where I played some notes and Aiden says, that one, that, not that one, that one. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> and then we come, 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 out, come up with a tune out of that. Oh, OK. Yeah, it's part of like the, the co-writing thing that I was mentioning earlier. Yeah. And you? are an acoustic folk musician yourself, right? That's your yeah. background. I get, yeah, I'd say so. And then Aiden, you're a jazz funk musician, right? Is, who, I'm sorry, I'm screwing up part of the first interview because there's so many. So Jackson and Aiden, you have different backgrounds than just pure acoustic folk, right? And that was? Yeah, we both um, played a lot more jazz funk. Jackson played a lot more gospel music Okay. Um, before we met Connor. Um, <laughs> And moved to Boston and got introduced to the scene here. And um, they didn't move to Boston for me. Yeah. They would. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, do you still play funk and jazz, or is this? So you have multiple. So each person here probably has multiple projects, but this is your band. Yeah, this is this is our group, but uh, but we're all sort of in in other things as well. Um, I play with a funk group that uh, you know has some weekly gigs, and it's like a ten piece band with a horn section. And oh, really? Very different than, our, than Pumpkin Bread. So. Yeah, I would say so. So what are we going to, so Pumpkin Bread, it's, it, define it again. I guess you can't, it's <laughs> non-definable, so it's, 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 it's folky, bluegrassy, Irishy. So what, right? That's you, a good so start, yeah. You've got the jig, <laughs> yeah. And there's a lot of things happening. <laughs> yeah, well, man, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we like to think just of it just as, as folk music and sort of a, uh, a collaboration between everything that we're doing and that's kind of the, the best term that we can find to describe it but it's really its own thing I think and but you don't have trouble so you played what did I say New York Baltimore Charlottesville Middlebury Portland mm -hmm. so are those um, clubs that just are wide open to any genre or are these specific like if somebody wants to see pumpkin bread what kind of club are they going to All right that's a good question I think we generally try to book stuff that's gonna be open-minded you know um, it would be it would be kind of weird if we showed up and and did a gig that was like a traditional Irish music audience because that's not what we're doing. So we wouldn't book that gig and or we'd have to not play our material or something like that, which we could do. We could play other music, but it's not what we're trying to do. So we generally book stuff that's, you know, um, interesting. So it's with, really that a traditional Irish, a traditional Irish Irish music gig would be that specific where if you showed up and played your style, some of it might not go over so well. Probably. No yeah. kidding. Yeah, not that they wouldn't like it, but it's like that's not what this venue is about, you know, or something like that, you know. Okay, sorry. So go on. So you're so right, yeah, no, so any right. kind of folk club would work for you though, because they'll take anything. Oh, more. Yeah, I mean, I think there are uh, a really kind of great. Uh, there's a great group of folk clubs sort of scattered throughout the United States that are really open to all genres within the broader category of folk music. Um, Club Passim is an excellent example uh, in Cambridge, uh, in Harvard Square, uh, where pretty much they just welcome any kind of acoustic mu or acoustic or kind of non-acoustic <laughs> music. Um, but yeah, so there's, there's really a, a really wonderful supply of venues that uh, we're able to kind of be a part of if, yeah. You have two CDs out, correct? All originals? Yeah, um, we have a, like our first record is self-titled, it's called Pumpkin Bread, and we sort of were recording it when we were all. What's on the ti what's on the cover? It's, it's a loaf. <laughs> Jackson designed a loaf, and with more <laughs> is it a loaf sort of pumpkin? They're, they're, little, they're little crumbs, like they, they worked really delicately on. Wow, yeah. cool. <laughs> and then the, and that's all originals? Yeah, with one exception. There's a tune, the very first tune is written by a harmonica player, and it's sort of, Perfect for the melodica, which we were we didn't doing. Hear today. We're, we're right. We were doing a lot of it at that at that point. So um, that that tune is by somebody else. But everything else that we've recorded since has been original music. And that was a couple years ago. And you have a more recent one out. Um, and that that one is titled 
Yeah, that one's called Dear Starling. After the name of a song? Right, yeah, so it's the, it's the name of the track. Um, Whose tune is it? Or I guess I shouldn't say that, right? It's Pumpkin Bread's tune. Um, it's a Pumpkin Bread tune, but I think the we worked on it together, but Mora and Jackson came up with the the main melody of it. We split up and they decided they were going to write a really fast, epic tune. And um, we ended up they ended up writing a slow, pretty tune. <laughs> <laughs> and um, that is available. Where can people, so people go to pumpkinbreadband.com to get the CDs or are they on? Yeah, yeah pumpkinbreadband.com um, is where everything is. You can find videos and, and the, the albums. Um, we're also on Facebook and Instagram and social media. And, and schedule. Yeah, iTunes, Spotify, Bandcamp, um, all the all the music. And so they can be downloaded and people can just precisely. Yeah. yeah. 502 Sessions, my guest today has been Pumpkin Bread, original acoustic music with Connor Hearn, Jackson Clausen, Stephen, Ma Stephen Manwaring, Aiden Scrimger, and Maura Sean Scanlon. Correct? Nailed it. All right. <laughs> 502 Sessions is all about original music, so if you're a musician and you're in a band or a solo act, don't hesitate to reach out to me. I listen to all styles of music, I check out links, and I respond to emails. It's 502sessions at gmail.com. Thank you very much, everyone. Great show. Thanks for having us. You're welcome. Play us out. One more? Let's do it. Yeah. Great. All right. Pumpkin bread, once again. <laughs>